And I realized those are the least people you can trust. Those are the people you have to watch the most, discern the most. Especially preachers, amen? Testing that you may discern. If it's one thing we like in today's church, discernment. Are we praying for discernment? Are we saying, not our will, God? I'm talking as a, as a church, as individuals too, but as a church, as a body of Christ serving Jesus Christ, are we saying, not our will, but your will? Not what we want, but what you want. Because what happens is, I read a, a really good book one time. It was a fiction book. Some people say, well, you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be even talking about that. It's a fiction book. But it's a fiction Christian book. It was called, Say You Don't Want to Go to Church Anymore. And the premise of this book was this. That once you start serving an institution, you become institutionalized. And everything that you do is for the institution. Our church here can never become an institution. It can never become about this church. If it does, we've done lost the battle. We fail as a church. We have to set our sights on something bigger than this, here and this. It has to be about the kingdom of God. All that we do must point to that. Everything we say, everything we teach, everything must point to God's kingdom. Too many churches have become institutions. And too many people that go to those churches have become institutionalized. And they fail to see the bigger picture. It goes no further than the doors of their building. This is sad. Because I've seen nice churches and people teaching great things. High teaching about God. Yet they fall short because they don't go further into His kingdom. They keep it about their church. And they fail. We can't fail if we are truly of Christ because Christ will not fail. We need discernment today, church. We need to know what the will of God is. Not just in our individual lives, but in the life of our church, our body. That we desire what He desires. What is your desire? To discern is to seek God's will. And to seek Him in His Word. To read God's Word, to pray, to spend time with God, listening to God. Is your prayers a one sided conversation? Bless the Lord. You ever talk to people like that? Just can't get a word in edgewise. You just sit there and you're just talking, 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 talking. And then it's over and you're gone. You go, what was that all about? A one-sided conversation is not prayer. Prayer should lift you, should transcend you into the throne room of God. And your heart begins to listen to what God is speaking through His Word. Prayer. Do we pray out of habit? Oh man, I forgot my prayers today. Oh man. God's Word, prayer, spend time with God. Our desire should be for God and not ourselves. As individuals and as a church. We have to say with Paul, it is no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. I want you to ask yourself about our, 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 our church, our, our, our group here. Does Christ live in us? Is this all about Jesus? 
That's a tough question. That's an introspection. There's not many churches today that will ask that question. For fear they may be found out. But if we lack, we need to find out. Amen? We need discernment in our body today. And we need to know what is good and acceptable and perfect. Because I tell you one thing, we're not perfect as humans, as individuals, and as a church, together, collectively. Tony? Yes, sir. Uh, I just want to throw in here, and I don't think I'm out of line. I think this works right in with it. When Timothy's talking in chapter 3, mm -hmm. uh, Verse starting verse 14, just to kind of shorten it down. But you must continue in things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. Amen. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped in every good work. Hallelujah. That's perfect. God's word is perfect. God's will is perfect. For our lives, for our church, for our body. God's ways are perfect. Why would we want that? Why would we accept anything less than perfect? For our families, for our children, for our brothers and sisters. Why would somebody come to you and has a question, why do you give them your opinion? <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's open up God's Word because His ways are perfect. I'll lead you astray with my opinions, my thoughts on this. That's what we should be striving for, Paul says. He says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So, you know, we need to look at ourselves and is our opinions the opinions of Christ? Amen. And the only way we're going to know that is through the Word. Through His Word. We should be, I say this all the time because I'm preaching to me. I should spend more time in God's Word than I do anything else in my life. Wow. That's hard to do. There's so many distractions today. So many things going on today. Why would you accept anything less than perfection for your life? Because God's ways are perfect. Jesus is perfect. Salvation is perfect. Many people don't like the way the Bible lays out salvation. But I've done it different. You ever look back on something that God did in your life and think, man, I've done that a lot different? Sure you would have. But it wouldn't have been as perfect. Because God's ways are perfect. Our thinking is... Not, not just our bodies are falling... Not just uh, uh, our hearts are falling, but our minds are falling too. We don't even think right. Because that's what sin did. It marred it all. You imagine Adam before sin and the relationship he had with Jesus or God before sin? It was perfect. And then he fell and the Bible says that he had to toil and work the ground, but also he had to toil and work in his thinking of who God was. We can see that in Genesis. Thinking wrong things. We can see all the prophets, the people that, that God called, thinking wrong things. And I go back to Acts. Remember, the I think it was the first Ananias, maybe the second Ananias. There's three Ananiases in there. And remember when God, right after, no, maybe been the third Ananias. Chapter, somebody help me, Curtis. Maybe. Here, let me just tell the story. Here it is. Paul had just gotten saved, right? God knocked Paul 
off his horse, blinded him, told him to go into this town. They led him into the town safe. But Paul was killing Christians right before that. God came to Ananias and said, Hey, go talk to Paul. And Ananias had another opinion. No, oh, God, you don't know who Paul is. He'll kill me. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. Right? Where's it at? Acts chapter 9, verse 13. Acts 9, 13. He said, wait a minute, God. Paul's killing guys like me because I believe in Jesus Christ. Now sometimes God tells you to do something that you think, that's insane. Well, what did God tell him? Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings and children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Amen. So sometimes suffering is just a part of the Christian walk. Suffering in the mind. Suffering in the separation from people you love. Things you love to do. Because that's what a living sacrifice is. That word sacrifice, we talk about it in a, in a cool kind of sense. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to be a sacrifice for Jesus. But that hurts, man. To be a sacrifice hurts. But let me tell you, God's will is perfect. And sometimes the pain is, 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 is just there for that reason. To bring you into perfection. In God's will and God's way. On the suffering tone, what I read earlier, if you back up one more verse in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Okay. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Mm -hmm. And what, yeah. what type of society do we live in? Do you know I can go to the store and buy all types of stuff to ease my pain? We're taught not to have pain, that pain is bad. I read a book by Paul Brand called The uh, Gift of Pain. Mm. Pain is a gift. And once we start seeing that, Debbie's pain is a gift mm. because it allows her to look back on the stuff that God has done for her. Amen. The one thing I go back with her is when she starts crying, when she starts hurting, what are five things that you like? How has God blessed you five ways? Let's start counting our blessings. Amen. And that starts easing the pain. Amen. I'm sorry. No, God's ways are perfect. Pain's part of that. Pain is part of that. Suffering is part of that. One thing the church doesn't have is a, a good doctrine of suffering today. We're told that Come to Jesus and everything's going to be good and better. Not in this world. No. God's ways are perfect. And His ways are not our ways. And they're not our ways. So we should be asking for discernment. We should be asking that, that, that it's not our desires, but God's desires that fill us. And live in us today. Young people, you need to start thinking that way. What does God desire of my life? How does God want me to be a witness to a lost and dying world? And that starts with salvation. That starts with repenting and trusting in Jesus Christ. Turning from yourself, turning from your sin, and turning to Christ. And trusting that He will lead you through every situation that you're in. He will keep you in the storm. He will hide you from the enemy. He will deliver you out of sickness. He will deliver you. And it may not be the way you think. He will bring you through this time of trouble.
because if we only will discern God's will and discern what is good, acceptable, and perfect. Salvation is perfection. Not our perfection, but God has perfected salvation in Jesus Christ. And it must begin there. Because if you're trying to discern God's will, you're trying to live a life that is pleasing to God, but you are not saved, it will never happen. It starts with stopping depending on you and start depending on Jesus. You're not going to please God in the flesh until you have Christ. And you start being a living sacrifice to Jesus. Cry out to God to save you if you're not saved today. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you have given us your word. For Lord, there are many, many Christians throughout the world today that the word is not readily available like it is here in our country. Yet I'm afraid that America will suffer worse. A worse tragedy than Sodom and Gomorrah. Because we have your word. You have given it to us. Yet we refuse to read it, to study it, Lord. We refuse to, to acknowledge that it is true. We refuse to acknowledge that it is inerrant and it is sufficient. Lord, help us, I pray. Help your church today in America. Lead us on the path of righteousness and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Today, Lord, we pray that our lives be a living sacrifice to Christ our Lord and Savior. Help us, I pray today, Lord. Help us. Let us not leave here like the man that looks at himself in a mirror and forget what he looks like. Let us always be constant and reminded of your word through the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. And I pray there be lost here today, Lord, that you save them. Fill them with your Spirit, Lord, and begin that transformation and that renewing of their minds that we are all being renewed day by day into the image of Jesus Christ and grace by grace upon grace. I praise you, O oh God. I praise you, O oh God. I praise you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all go.